Now, out come the GP midgets. Four, Ron Methven, and 14, Terry Clark, at the front row of the GP midget grid. So the GP midgets gridding up and there's the green flag to send them away. It was a pretty good grid too, a nice tight bunch grid and they got away to a smart start going into turn one, two and car number four driven by Ron Methven is the leader. 14, Terry Clark chasing him up in second place. In comes 31, Andrew Seckold followed by the car number five, John Black. And here's the number three car. It looks like number three, Grant Walker, moving up around the outside to go up into fourth place as the grid really tightens up at the back of the pack. The seven of Clive Pollard is also starting to come out of the pack after having mechanical problem in his previous race. He's got things sorted out this time and moving up on the outside of the number three, Grant Walker, the number seven of Pollard is moving up into fourth place and going strongly. Clive Pollard up into fourth place. Now round the outside of some more of them he goes. Round the outside, up into third place. Can he go up into second spot? Yes, Clive Pollard goes up into second place chasing this leader. And the leader is Ron Methman. Pollard in second spot. And around the outside of him he goes and he's got the lead. The seven of Clive Pollitt with a drive right round the outside has gone to the lead and by gee I think you can just about put the glasses down. He's going very strongly. Seven, Clive Pollitt leads four, Ron Methven, then 31, Andrew Seckold. Australia one car of Gary Coleman starting to get going a bit better but he's back in fourth place and I doubt very much whether he'll get anywhere near this race leader Clive Pollitt. Let's have a look at the Australian champion in the number one car trying to make up ground on the two slower ones. Now will he go around the outside as well as Pollitt? No he's not doing it quite as well. He didn't set himself close enough to go into that corner. Up onto the two pink card now, down on the inside of Seckold it goes Coleman, he moves up into third place and might be able to pick off one more car to probably finish second but that's the best he can do because the win is going to go to number seven, Clive Pollitt and he thoroughly deserved the victory, a good drive. Second place will go to four, Ron Methven, then Australia one, 31 and number 14 was fifth. Time 224.970. Seven Clive Pollitt, sponsored by Westram, is the winner of the race. Westram t-shirts. Second place to four, Ron Methman, sponsored by Castrol. Third, Australia One, Gary Coleman, also sponsored by Westram T-shirts. 31, Andrew Seckold, sponsored by Castrol, was fourth. And 14, Terry Clark, sponsored by Clark Cleaning, was fifth. Two minutes, 24.970 the time. This is the GP Midget Final.
this is the GP final. Provided us with some pretty close racing tonight, the GP Midgets. Good greet at the start, and it was headed out by the 31 car of Andrew Seckol. Moving up very quickly to take the lead. Now going out quickly with him is the car number four of Ron Methven and uh, then behind him is the five of John Black. Then the number six car of Gordon Crumley. And back in the pack, the drivers such as uh, Alf Davey and Clive Pollitt and the current Australian champion Gary Coleman, well back in the pack, chasing out after the 31 car of Andrew Seckold who has the lead. in trouble down in turn four straight away the green flag waves them away for the restart to the GP final and the 69 of Trevor Hawkins was the car who spun and he's been left right at the back of the pack and right up the front of the pack is the 31 car of Andrew Seckold followed by the four of Ron Methman going up on the inside the number 11 car of David Lewis is looking for third place and I think he might get it although pushing up on the outside of him in the car number six is Gordon Crumley however Lewis managed to get through on the inside and take up third place as Crumley goes back to fourth and there's trouble the car number five of John Black just did not turn left it went straight ahead, he's got his hand up to indicate that he's all right, but it just did not turn left at all. You can clearly see the wheel marks here from my position in the tower heading straight into the concrete wall. But he has his hand up to indicate that he is all right. Away they go again, the second of the restarts and the 31 car of Andrew Seckold still has the lead. He's been under plenty of pressure from these stoppages, but there doesn't really appear to be anyone coming strongly from the back of the pack. The 11 of the Lewis is into a third place, but he's passed on the outside by Ian Saville, who's really got himself going, and he moves up into third. Perhaps he might be the danger, if there is any, to the two pink cars sponsored by Castrol who have the lead. 31 Andrew Seckold, 4 Ron Methven, and now Ian Saville. That's where the interest is. Saville is trying to run them down. He's the leader. Still, the leader is the 31 of Andrew Seckold followed by the four of Ron Methven. The number eight of Ian Saville is really starting to gather them in. He's moving up quickly. He's trying to move up on the inside of the number four, Ron Methven. Can't quite find the spot at the moment and still the two Castrol cars have the lead. Oh, they bumped into each other. The 31 of Seckold and the four of Methven. And Ian Saville's camp right behind them. He got through on the inside. Can he get the checkered flag? Down to take the checkered flag in the GP final and the 31 car of Seckold is first and he's very ecstatic about it. The 8 of Ian Saville is second, the 4 of Methven, followed by the 7 of Pollitt and then came the 6 of Crumley and no time taken 
but a very excited Andrew Seckold in the pink car number 31, sponsored by Castrol, is the winner of the GP Midget Final, and a good drive by him. He was under plenty of pressure from the stoppages, but he managed to hang on and take out the chequered flag, and congratulations to him. 77 is Ken Norman. We are Peter Ingham it is. Ken Norman in the 77. The 36 is Paul Morris. Five is Charlie Winter. Seven, Rodney Fairweather. 38, Mark Pickles. 92 is Jeff Jimison. 76, Alan Chandler. The 33 car of Peter Reynolds. The 98 car of Steve Evans. And the 78 car of Alan Chandler. That's the way they line up. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of them. See if we can uh, pick ourselves a winner here, Ross. They're all pretty much of even ability, these guys. These are the front markers. I suppose the more well-known drivers are in the next race. They're away, though. Peter Ingham goes quickly, but is immediately claimed on the outside by Norman. One of them left the in went in field very quickly. That was Jimison. But he's back onto the track and already the number four of Ingham has established a lead of about 10 metres, but chasing him quickly is Norman. The 38 car comes next, that's Mark Pickles. Going around the outside is uh, the number seven car of Rodney Fairweather who runs in a third spot now. But Peter Ingham leads out with two to go as they cross the line this time. Leading from Ken Norman. Then the challenge comes from Rodney Pickles and the 92 car of Jeff Jimison who left the track but is now going along nicely, looking at least for a minor placing. A couple of slow folks around here not moving very quickly are going to be run on to with one lap to go. It's Peter Ingham leading out. Then the 77 car of Ken Norman, the two pole sitters. Then Rodney Fairweather, who's going to be claimed now by Jeff Jimison in the 92, is he? Not quite. But it's going to be a go for the number one spot here. Held up on the inside is the leader of throughout and he got home. Peter Ingham, 77 Norman. Then the seven car there of Fairweather. Then the 92 car there of Jeff Jimison. The others sailing away, but that's how the first four finished. I thought he might have got into a little bit of strife there, the leader throughout Ingham. When he did run to the slower car with about uh, just half of the main straight to go. But he did well to get round him without losing pace and took out the event. Give him a round of applause as he comes round there. Now, that's a pretty good drive from uh, Peter Ingham. In the little four, uh, sound a bit like a grasshopper. They're a lot of fun. They are a lot of fun. And a lot of the drivers, just like uh, a lot of the uh, Formula One Grand Prix drivers, started off in go-kart ranks. Drivers the likes of Alain Prost and those drivers starting off in go-kart ranks. A lot of top-class speedway drivers have started off in these Formula 500 ranks. So, a pretty class field here, as Lee, uh, we've got the pick of the drivers here on tonight's program in the Formula 500. Certainly have the number 55 as Chris Mell, 17 as Wayne Harris, 58, Grand Household, 13, Brian Harris, 62, Roy Urpeth, 69 is Ken Threadgate, the number one of Lloyd Thorley, known so well for national titles, 31, Graham Baxter, and 57, Brad Cameron. And these guys can go, and 17 leads them out, Wayne Harris. How long will he stay in front? They're all over him like the measles. And going around the outside is Grand Household. I think it's he anyway, and he's absolutely flying. He's about 15 metres in front already and going very strongly. One of them's gone infield, taking the strawberry shortcut, but it's to no avail as Grand Household leads out now. From uh, the 17 car of Wayne Harris, is it? No, in fact, it's 13, Brian Harris, that's ran into second position. Then the 57 car of Brad Cameron has come right from the back of the field. 62 there is Roy Urpeth, and they've skipped away a little bit. But here comes that man, Thorley, although he's struggling now with the uh, number 55 car of Chris Mell, but makes a bit of way on him now. Just one lap to go as they get round here this time, and way out in front now is Grand Household. Will need to fall to be beaten. Brad Cameron's run into second position. 
Then the 62 car of Roy Urbeth. Here comes Lloyd Thurley. He'll run fourth, but he'll do no better than that. But that's a pretty good drive out in front. The 58 car there of Grand Household from the second line. Beat the back marker 57. Cameron is start at the back of the field. And Roy Urbeth, a good drive to run into third position. But a good win there to Household. But the driver that uh, caught my eye was the man that ran into second position right from the back when they lit out and that was the 57 of Brad Cameron but take nothing from the winner 1 minute 7.221 1 minute 7.221 the winning time and Grant Household takes the chequered flag he'd like to be doing that next week too in the New South Wales Championships I'll bet and he's every chance he's a pretty good competitor here at the Motodrome every chance of doing that next week those cars powered by 500 cc uh, motorcycle type engines a lot of yamahas hondas and jawas so coming out the formula 500s as ross suggests this is the feature i was drivers mark pickles sorry lee i was right a little earlier when we were discussing here in the tower that uh, max dumsney actually won an australian title in this division the formula 500 division so he stepped up from the, the little speed cars into the big sprinters. Certainly did and drives them very well too as we've already seen. <coughs> Spread out right round the track. Look at the back mark a Stawley over there with the number 57 Brad Cameron. They're feeding him all they are half a lap behind. Let's face it. About to go, roll them away and they're off. They're going six laps and that won't be enough for the back marker. Flying up front now is the number 36 car of Paul Morris. Starting to catch up already the back markers. A couple of them there. The winner of the last semi-main high on the track hit the fence. Harris. But it's let out by 36 Paul Morris. Right on his hammer there now. 77 car of Ken Norman running second. Couple of them gone in field. Oh gee, officials running out of the way, but 77 goes by. That's Ken Norton. Then the 56 car there. 55 car it is. Whoa! Big turn, big roll over there. Went right up over the top. Stop the race. There's a bad prang here at the top of Main Straightaway in turn one. Lee, that's the, the dangers we point out to people to staying behind that uh, fence that's on the concrete wall. That car actually got to the top of the wire fence. I was looking at the front runners in the field, Ross calling the race, and I looked back. Amazing. Absolutely flying through the air when I saw it on the way down. So Roy Urpeth is the man. He'll be... I'll say this much, he's in roll cages, he's got a four-point harness, but that's going to be one heck of a jolt for him. The car seemed to just get airborne going right into turn number one. It then clipped the fence and it ended up at the top of the wire fence. Struck the top of it. That's why we do ask everybody to stay back. This uh, track has amazing um, safety precautions, probably the best safety precautions in the country. Officials there checking the top of that fence, that's, Ross. He's that's, left a mark on it, all that's right? That's where it hit. It hit the top of the wire, I, I can assure you. Roy Herbert appears to be OK looking from here. He's moving in the car and they're... Uh, strapping his harness ambulance people over there now these little uh, glorified lawn mowers that's insulting them I know they really are top design little machinery okay there's the wave Roy Urpeth is a-okay that's really good to see well 
when we say he's A-OK, -okay, he's going to be very, very shaken and sore. That was, that was one hell of a crash. Very, very shaky. He'll need to be kept under observation for the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. Yes, the ambulance people with him at the back of the ambulance there, you might note. But with the right safety precautions in these vehicles, the roll cage, as you can see, as Ross pointed out, the four-point harness, he's got out of what was a real dipsy doodler. Oh, I've, I've never seen a car go that high. Without that safety fence there, and, and you don't like to say this, there's every chance that car's going to end up in the crowd. Well, it would have uh, only uh, been able to go in that direction by G went high, didn't he? Boy, oh boy. Well, we'll see what happens this time. Bit of smoke. But they're underway once more. And 36 Paul Morris maintained the lead only for a short time. When going around, he was Rodney Fairweather, who was subsequently passed by Kenny Norman. Coming quickly is the 55 car of Chris Mell, now running into second position. And here comes Thorley through on the inside, is it? No, it's Graham Baxter. He's already worked his way through, but Thorley's working past some of the slower vehicles now and will soon run into fourth or fifth position. But up front, it's Norman. With a 55 car there of Chris Mell now going round him and high, wide and handsome on the track. But Norman stays in front of Graham Baxter, who without doubt is now the man to beat in this position. But here comes Thorley. Round the outside, running into third position as I speak. One lap to go and they hit the start-finish line this time. And Lloyd Thorley's going to sort it out with the back marker, co-back marker, Graham Baxter. But Baxter, about 10 metres in front now of Lloyd Thorley. What can the Singleton driver do? Goes under the coke timer. Half a lap to go. Graham Baxter will need to lose the wheel to lose this race. And Graham Baxter over the line from Lloyd Thorley. Hanging on to his third place is the 77 of Kenny Norman. Then the five car, was it? The 50, no, I've lost the number. But 55 was uh, fifth in, that was Chris Mell. Could have been Grand Household ran into fourth position in 58. It certainly was, but Graham Baxter was the quicker of the back markers up into the front runners and maintained that uh, good lead despite the fact that uh, number one Lloyd Thorley ran onto him just showing how good these back markers are.